Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another series. This is CK2 on the Game of Thrones mod. My name is Walshy, as always, and today we're going to be playing, as I just said, CK2 Game of Thrones. Now, I was messing around with this game, and I was having a bit of fun just sort of playing in my spare time here, and I decided why not share it with you guys, why not get you guys involved, why not play around a little bit, and uh, maybe get a series out of it. So, I had the idea to maybe do something a little bit ambitious. I think this might be way too ambitious, actually, but our goal here today is going to be a quest for the Iron Throne. I want our family, our brand new family that I've just created, to reach the Iron Throne and take control of the Seven Kingdoms, take control of Westeros. Can we do it? I don't know. The only way to do it is to find out by playing. So we're starting in the Clash of Kings uh, setting, so obviously the War of Five Kings is going on at the moment, um, with Lord Stannis currently trying to um, put out the information, you know, make everyone aware that uh, Tom and Joffrey and Marcella are all bastard children of Jamie and Cersei, which we all know is to be true. If you've read the series, book series, and watched the TV series, you'll know that. So, obviously, we're going to agree with this. We should have known. And just before we get into the actual game, let's just—I'm just going to take you through my character just for quickly, uh, just for a quick moment here, just so you guys are all up to speed. So we've got Lord Garland of Oakenshield, of House Seri. Uh, he's a Reachman, and his religion is the Faith of the Seven. And as you can see, his stats are pretty well rounded. They're not. Like none of them are overly, overly brilliant. Maybe his stewardship is better than average, but the rest of them are just pretty, um, pretty standard, stock standard stats. Uh, as for the traits, we've got a few good ones here. I went with skilled steward to give him the plus five percent on the national tax modifier, plus five, a uh, plus zero point five uh, monthly prestige, and plus six stewardship, which is where he's getting his um, crazy stewardship stu stewardship abilities from. He's also quick, which gives him plus three to all of his skills. He's a trained fighter, which gives him plus two martial. He's a hedonist, which gives him negative piety, plus fertility, negative church opinion, negative general character opinion for opposite traits, and uh, same trait opinion plus 20. I also gave him ruthless. Now, I gave him these two just because um, I wanted to sort of knock back down his age a little bit just so he could put a few more, uh, you know, better, uh, what do you call it? But better traits in, like the quick and trained fighter and skilled steward. So I put in hedonist, ruthless, and lustful just so I could knock that back down a little bit. And uh, he also has gregarious, which gives him plus two diplomacy and plus five opinion for attraction, for vassals, and for the people with the same trait. So as you can see, he doesn't have any other living relatives. He has no, uh, no wife, no children, no siblings, no parents, grandparents, wards, anything like that. This is a completely new character. Absolutely 100% completely new. So we're going to be trying to, take, trying to take him and his family, the House of Seri, to the Iron Throne. Can we do it? I don't know. We may as well try. As I said before, we're starting on Oakenshield, and I think we might be in a good position here because I was messing around before, as I said, and I noticed that Oakenshield actually has a fair amount of levy. I don't know if I can actually see it here. Who do I belong to? Lordship of Oakenshield. Actually, is that, that should be it. Doesn't have a. There's no high lordship for the Shield Islands. I don't think. Where am I? There I am, Garland. Yeah, so I can I can raise just over 1,800 men, close to 1,900 men, just by myself. So that's pretty good. I have to say that's not too bad. And uh, through alliances and stuff like that, we should be able to get a good start going here. We should be able to get to uh, a fairly good position for ourselves. So the first thing we're going to do here with our new character, with Garland, is we're going to give him an ambition. And that ambition is going to obviously be to get married because that's the first step in our little process here. We won't go and try and find a wife yet, we'll wait a little bit just to sort of sort ourselves out and sort out our position here on Oak and Shield, but we will get there eventually. So the next thing we need to do, oh we know that we don't have an heir yet, that's pretty obvious. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to fill our council positions, because if I'm not mistaken, yeah, we, we don't have anyone in any position at all. So, that's something we need to do. We need to appoint someone for each position here, so let's go... We'll go with our steward first. I always like to go with the steward first. Uh, we've got a few here on 10. Um, none of these are my vassals, so that's what that's another thing I'll look out for. So if someone is a vassal and they they have a high enough stat to sort of be considered for a position, I'll put them in just so I can get that uh, bonus to, to vassal opinion. But none of these are my vassals, they're all courtiers, so that's okay. You can pick any one of these, really. And from the looks of it, 
Theodore here is a brilliant steward, which could potentially be good for us if we had her as our uh, master of coin. Sorry, not our steward, our master of coin. Um, so yeah, we're going to pick Theodore as our... Uh, is he? That's a he. Sorry, I think I might have called her a she then. Called him a she then. It's actually a, it's actually a man. My bad. So we're going to have Theodore as our master of coin here. And we won't assign them a task just yet. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, let's go ahead and appoint our Castellan. So, we'll put more our Cordier and Oakenshield as our Castellan, as he has the highest stewardship by a long way. Master of Laws. Now, let's see. Rhonda, Cordier and Oakenshield looks pretty good. No other, no vassals there or anything like that. And she's definitely got the highest uh, diplomacy there. So, we'll make her our Master of Laws, giving her a little nice little... Opinion boost there as well. Our Master at Arms, uh, definitely Ector, I think. That seems like a good idea. Yeah, we'll go with Ector. He is trained, but he is an incompetent, uh, incompetent commander, which is a bit unfortunate. Although we do have Humphrey here, who is a brilliant commander. He's a knight, flanker, cavalry. He's got a couple of bonuses there, though. He's offensive and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I don't know why he hasn't got such good. Oh, he hasn't got such good um, martial skill there, but he is a brilliant commander. We might make him our master at arms instead. All right, master of whispers, whisperers. Let's go with Felia Cordier at Oakenshield for sure. Look at that, eighteen. She's also a brilliant commander as well, with eleven martial. So we'll make her our master of whisperers. Our maester is going to be Adam. He's the only one we actually have, and our septon is going to be Lionel because he's the only one we have as well. We might actually send away for another septon because he's pretty bad. If we're being completely honest here. Alright, so we're doing pretty good so far. We're doing nicely. Nice off to a nice start. As you can see, the uh, War for the Stormlands is going on between Renly and Stannis at the moment. And Mace Tyrell, our uh, Lord Paramount of the Reach here, is actually involved in the war. So we may end up getting called in. I don't know. Potentially. We haven't actually been requested or anything like that. So we don't actually have to join the war. We're not obligated to. So that's okay. Uh, let's have a look here just for a second. We're not. Oh, sorry. We are. We do have a high high lordship. We have a high lordship of the sea, of the shield isles. Isles. That does make a lot of sense, actually. I don't know why I didn't realize that in the first place. I just forgot to click on Dejour when I was looking at that. So realistically, our first step first steps here will be to secure the shield isles for ourselves. We want to claim the Dejour lordship, high lordship of the shield isles, for ourselves. That seems like the most reasonable first step here. But then, of course, you know, stuff like the High Lordship of Ocean Road might be a good idea as well. I think that's a pretty weak little um, High Lordship there. It's just two counties. But next thing's next. We're going to go ahead and uh, set our, our council to some tasks. So first thing we'll do is... Actually, the first thing we will do is check the Crown Authority here. Hold on. Um, how do we do this? I need to go to Laws. Click on the Reach. There we go. So, Medium Crown Authority, which means we can't actually wage private wars within the realm. So, the only way so far, at the moment, we're going to actually be able to acquire new lands for ourselves is to go and get marriages and that kind of thing. So, let's have a look at the other lords here on the on the Shield Isles. They're all pretty old. Uh, the youngest is 39, 50, and then there's 57. So, likely they're going to have some daughters. So, let's have a look at the High Lord. Who's actually the High Lord? No one actually owns the High Lordship of the uh, Shield Isles because we all have one island each. That does make sense. So, our Lord is Mace Tyrell. Um... So let's have a quick look here. Let's have a look at Lord Osbert of South Shield first. He hasn't got any children that are female, and he has a sibling who is 30 and female, but that's not what we want. We don't want that kind of connection to that family. So let's have a look at Lord Morabold of Green Shield. No daughters or female siblings. Okay, Lord Gunther of, Grey of Grey Shield does have a daughter. She is 21 years old. Esma Grimm is her name. Of House Grimm, obviously. And 
Lord Gunther Grayshield. Let's have a look at the realm tree. What does he look like? Just for reference, he's got a hood on. I think he was actually... He had a bit more power than I did. Yeah. Here we go. So he can field just a tick under 1,900 men when required. So that would be a nice alliance to have. Because if we have a look here, we have Osbert and Morobold. If we have a look at the realm tree for... Just quickly here, have a look at the realm tree. See who has the power. Uh, da, 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 da. They actually can field less troops. Oh, about the same, actually. They can field one less man than us. So if we get a nice alliance here between us and... What's his name again? Us and Guthor of Grey Shield, we might have a good chance of being able to conquer these Shield Isles if the Crown Authority does get lowered. Whether or not it will be, though, that's another question. Uh, but hopefully it will. So, let's go ahead and see if we can get a marriage between us and Guthor's daughter, Esma. Actually, let's have a look at her traits first. She's kind, she's an incompetent scientist, that's okay. She's stubborn, she's shy, and she's wroth. That's okay. Uh, some of those traits we probably wouldn't want to transfer over to our children. But, you know, we got to do what we got to do. And we can't actually get a marriage with them anyway, because... Lord Guthor would want a matrilineal marriage. Because if we have a look, actually, he might... His... I can't actually say it. He, he might have a... Um, a succession that just... Gives it to the oldest... Uh, the oldest child rather than... The eldest male child. Because he does have a son, but... Oh, no. He is the heir. So I don't, I don't really know why he wants a matrilineal marriage that might just be in the hope that he can further his line. Yeah, because he hasn't got any sort of negative traits that sort of take away from that... Uh, what am I trying to say? That take away from fertility, so that's a bit of a confusing one, but that's okay. That's alright. No problem at all. We can work around that. So, Lord Tugon of Westbrook here. He looks kind of old. He might have a daughter around the right age. 28. That's okay. We can have a look here. Expert scientist, gregarious, arbitrary, rude, and deceitful. So she's got high learning and some pretty level stats here. Nice marshal and stewardship. Just out of curiosity's sake, would she accept a marriage? Yeah, they would accept a marriage between us two. So the Lord of Westbrook, Lord Turgon. Let's have a look here. So he... He would belong to Mace in the the lordship of the of high garden i think hold on let's have a look here westbrook lordship of high garden yeah he how do I, how do i find here we go i think this might be it so what was his name i can't remember what his name was Hold on. Westbrook, we're looking for, for Turgon. See how many men he can field for us. Not a whole lot by the look of it. Turgon. 1100. So, that's okay. That's that's more than... Co so, combined forces, that's more than anyone else can sort of combine. I uh, can sort of field, sorry. So, that might be a nice alliance to have. But she is kind of old. She's twenty. She's not old. Just she's twenty-eight. But realistically, we'd want someone a little younger just to be on the safe side. Really, a Oakheart's a bit too old for us. Um, what have we got here across the water? Tanya Norcross. She's an incompetent commander. Wrath, slothful, zealous, honourable, and she's only got really got good marshal and okay learning, so probably not. What about over here? Victoria Dunn, from House Dunn, uh, daughter of the Lord, of Lord Leo of Dunsbridge. This could be an interesting marriage. Hold on, I meant to go click on her. Competent steward, that's nice. Proud, cruel, and that's a bit, bit unlucky there. Ambitious and shy. So she's got nice stats, she's got good learning. Solid stewardship, about pretty good stewardship actually, the same as ours, I think, yeah. So we'd have pretty good stewardship if we married her. 
I think... Hold on, who's her father? Lord Leo of Dunsbridge. Dunsbridge belongs to Brightwater Keep. So let's have a look at their realm tree. Dunsbridge can fill it. 415, that's a bit low on the low side, but... She has pretty nice stats, I, th I would have to say. What about, actually, Elise Dunn as well? Competent Steward? Oh, yeah. Her overall skill isn't that great. And her, her traits are actually kind of worse, in my opinion. So let's have a look here. See if we can get a marriage with Victoria Dunn. No. So that's a bit unfortunate. Let's leave her then. Tanya Norcross. She looks alright. I don't know. I kind of want someone... Catswold? No. Westbrook. Sansa. She does have pretty good stats overall. She's got really good learning and solid martial and stewardship. And... Togon can field a, a decent amount. Did I already look at that and see if I could get a marriage with her? I didn't. She can. We're going to take this. We're going to take this one, I think. Even though she's 28, I don't think it really matters. I think we'll be able to get at least a son out of it and maybe a daughter, hopefully. So, yeah. This seems like a good idea to me, so we're going to go ahead and do this. Get that marriage going. So, we'll kick this off now and make sure that marriage actually goes through. So, we're a good military ruler. Awesome. Lady Arwen of Ocean Road has founded the Liege Loyalist Faction. Okay. Where actually is Ocean Road? That's this one over here, I think. I think it's that, that lordship there. High Crown Authority in the Reach. Uh, yeah, no, I don't want that. I want you to lower it, not higher it. Okay, so we've actually been called to, called to war here. Um, in support of King Joffrey. Which is, which is okay, we'll do that. And uh, they'll make King Joffrey's opinion of us change by plus 15 for 10 years. Which is good. So we can we can do that. We don't want to really fight for Rob anyway if we're a part of the Reach. So we'll go ahead and support the throne. And uh, just before we, we raise our levies, I'll pause that. And uh, I think... What just happened here? I didn't just accidentally declare independence, did I? Or am I saying that I'm a part of the Iron Throne? I can't even tell what that is. That might be just... The hell? What have I done? I've done something, but okay, we'll figure that out in the next part, I think, because I'm going to have to call it quits here. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Join me again soon, and when I figure out what the hell I just did... And uh, when hopefully our marriage goes through, we can start building our family towards taking the Iron Throne from the Baratheons. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys soon.